Hi, uh, I'm Nick Peachy. Um, I work as a learning technology consultant, uh, a freelance doing writing and teacher training, mainly things to do with technology. I also work for Bell Educational Services, um, developing blended learning courses and things like that for them. And I'm a lecturer at uh, University of Westminster on the MAT cell, media and technology again, always technology. So if I understand rightly, you've got quite a lot to do with IATEFL, so you must have seen some really good talks here this year. Can you tell us about one or two things that you've really enjoyed so far? Uh, well, I, I, I do work here with IATEFL and with the British Council, and I work um, with the online team, sort of presenting, um, interviewing presenters and things like that. So actually, I haven't seen anything, I'm afraid. Um, so I'm stuck in sort of up, up on the balcony in interviewing people, but you know, loads of people come to me and, and they get to tell me about their talks which is kind of nice because you know you get the kind of 10 minute version and and lots of variety there so that's been really interesting and uh, meetings sort of the people who are giving the talks yeah okay and uh if I understand rightly, you've been with the British Council uh, to all sorts of different places recently doing training. I remember you saying Pakistan, places yeah. like that. Do you think that educational technology is as relevant for people in developing countries as it is for people in so-called first world countries? Is there a difference in how it's used? Um, in terms of the relevance, I think it's more relevant in developing countries than it is in, in developed countries. You know, I was working in Pakistan with university teachers, looking at how technology can open up access to things that, you know, resources that they just don't have access to there any other way. You know, shipping books and, and DVDs and videos around the world is very expensive, but if you've got internet connectivity, you, know, you can access so much now, and that can really help, I think, developing countries to sort of level the playing field in terms of education so I think it's extremely relevant yeah extremely relevant and people there are very aware of that and, and definitely very interested and, and keen to get involved had some wonderful teachers there you know I was training up a group of well actually now it's four groups of um, uh, technology trainers and training them to go out and teach more in their their kind of environment about technology and you know so much enthusiasm and, and open-mindedness and willingness to sort of take these things on it was really a great place to work you know thank you okay uh, last question then I'm gonna put you on the spot a little bit um, oh, no. I know you've been doing a teacher training for a long time you've run a brilliant blog that I'll, I'll link to in, in this video um, can you tell us a teacher who's thinking of getting started with using technology with their students a simple or easy way to start easing it into their teaching slowly but surely Oh, it's really difficult to know where the best place to start is because, you know, I, for me there are so many good places to start. I mean, I, I think the, 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 the thing to do is, you know, take that first step, you know, get involved. It's not really that difficult. Technology is getting easier and easier to use all the time. Maybe start with just a blog. I mean, there's a free platform called Posterous where you can create your own blog just by sending an email to, to an email address. And, you know, something like that just to get started could be really good. Set up a few kind of activities for your students that they can do online at home. You know, it, the most difficult thing I think about using technology is when you try to use it in the classroom because there are all these kinds of problems with, you know, connectivity and resources and, you know, getting computers into the class or taking your, your students to a computer room which can seem really unnatural. But there are some great ways of, you know, making homework a hell of a lot more interesting, getting students sending each other, you know, video messages or watching video clips on YouTube and doing little quizzes. Loads you can do, you know, just get in there and get involved. You know. Nick, thank you very much. Thank you.